there was a point in time not that long ago when it was a basic principle of the Republican Party to consider Vladimir Putin a major threat to the United States. I mean, I remember so clearly watching my former boss, Barack Obama, debate Mitt Romney back in 2012 and Romney saying basically exactly that. Russia, I indicated, is a geopolitical foe. I'm not going to wear rose-colored glasses when it comes to Russia or Mr. Putin. Now, I'm sure I personally attacked Mitt Romney at the time. I probably did. And I don't typically side with him over Barack Obama. But, I mean, it sure feels like he had a point there. Putin's regime was a threat to our interests. And that threat has actually only grown worse since Romney made those comments in 2012. Remember, back in 2014, Putin invaded Ukraine and seized the Crimean Peninsula. And at that time, the Republican line was to hammer President Obama for not doing enough, in their view, to deter and punish Putin. At the time, Republican Congressman Mike Turner said, quote, this is a president that is retracting the U.S. policy at a time when obviously Russia sees an opportunity. Senator Lindsey Graham urged President Obama to, quote, suspend Russian membership in the G8 and the G20 at least for a year and for every day they stay in Crimea. Add to the suspension. And Senator Ted Cruz said that Putin, quote, has nothing to fear from the United States, and that is why he's proceeding with impunity. That rhetoric was all pretty tough on Russia, and for good reason. They invaded a sovereign country and stole their land. But beginning in 2016, that hardline Republican position toward Russia began to kind of soften. There was, of course, the Donald Trump of it all. That was a big factor. The Republican presidential candidate obviously had a very different view of Vladimir Putin than many in his party. We all know that. History tells us that. You may remember that the Trump campaign actually changed the Republican Party platform on Ukraine's defense in 2016. It went from calling on the U.S. to provide Ukraine lethal defensive weapons, similar to what a lot of those members had called for, to the very much more benign phrase, appropriate assistance. And once Trump took office, he continued to openly praise and defend Vladimir Putin. There was a whole laundry list of things he said, a habit he hasn't exactly been able to break. But during Trump's tenure, there was another very loud and influential right-wing voice that sided with Putin over and over and over again. Why do I why care about what's going on in the conflict between Ukraine and Russia? Because, and I'm serious. Like, why do I I'll care? Tell you why. And why shouldn't I root for Russia, because, which I am? Could any of these people actually tell you why Vladimir Putin is so bad? Why is he so bad? He's bad! I think we should probably take the side of, of, of Russia uh, uh, if we have to choose between Russia and Ukraine. That is my view. It might be worth asking yourself, since it is getting pretty serious, what is this really about? Why do I hate Putin so much? Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? So why does permanent Washington hate him so much? If you've been watching the news, you know that Putin is having a border dispute with a nation called Ukraine. Border dispute is certainly one way to characterize a major military invasion. Of course, Carlson is now just another far-right conspiracy peddler with a show on the Internet. He's no longer on Fox, as we all know. And he's apparently been spending the last few days in Moscow for some reason. Who knows? We don't know why. He has to stay relevant somehow, so I guess we'll learn in the coming days. Maybe. But his position on Putin and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, one that would have been antithetical to Republican orthodoxy less than a decade ago, has apparently become now the majority view within the party. Because Republicans in Congress have been delaying additional aid to Ukraine since October. Today, House Republican leadership rejected any possibility of voting for the Senate's bipartisan compromise bill that would have provided funding for Ukraine, Israel, and the U.S. border. A package that, by the way, as a reminder, they themselves had demanded. And as National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said back in December, a vote against funding for Ukraine is a vote to help Putin. Are you saying that any member of Congress who votes against aid to Ukraine is voting for Putin? I believe that any member of Congress who does not support funding for Ukraine is voting for an outcome that will make it easier for Putin to prevail. That is, a vote against supporting Ukraine is a vote to improve Putin's strategic position. That's just an inescapable reality. That's just an inescapable reality. And unfortunately, it's the reality we're currently living in.